So Susie Robel, the one with the model that relates fractals to our subjective experience of time, um, takes these fractal measures and says, okay, what does that have to do with how we experience time? Um, and I build on her theory a lot. So one of the key uh, descriptors that she uses is levels of descriptions, or LODs. And so it's just levels of scale. So they're labeled here. This is the first level of description. This is the second level of description, third, fourth, etc. Okay, and that's, when do I start? I started 10 minutes, 15 minutes after that. So, all right, so this is one way that we can think of how the, well, you know, I'm going to skip to the next slide. I'm going to come back to this one. Okay, so in Brobel's description of time, the fractal dimension, which is the description of how deep the scale of the fractal goes, is the same as temporal density. Um, and the temporal depth is the number of levels of description. There are two ways of describing the, the temporal depth and the temporal density are two ways of describing um, that zoom, how far you can zoom in. Um, okay, and so she claims that levels of description are created by remembering, reflecting, learning, rearranging events of the past within the present. And so every time you learn something, you're adding a level of description to your repertoire um, of, of how you interface with the world. And so the example is, well, and so, and you're increasing your temporal depth in that way. So the more, well, okay, so the example is the class reunion. So if you have a couple who goes to their high school reunion, the person who knows all those people is going to be operating on multiple levels of description because they've got stories to go with this person and memories of that teacher and all these things to talk about that they have stored in their, you know, in their memories from the past. And so they're operating on multiple levels of description. So that evening's going to go pretty fast because they're just talking, 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 remembering, remembering, remembering. It's a very temporally dense time period. In retrospect, it'll seem like it took a long time because they did, they remembered so much stuff. Whereas the spouse, who doesn't know any of these people, doesn't have any of those associated memories, is gonna, the time is gonna go much slower. Sorry, not snapping, slower. <laughs> the time is gonna drag because they're experiencing it as, at a more shallow level of description. Um, but in retrospect, it will seem to go by very fast because they don't have as much information associated with that moment in time. The more information you have associated with the moment in time, the denser it is and the slower it seems to go in retrospect, even though during the experience it seems to go fast. Okay. So she calls the process of creating these levels of description information or condensation. And so I think that as you have the present moment and you're taking in as much as you can or whatever you're paying attention to and you're condensing that into a memory, storing it in your brain. Uh, and she talks about going towards the prime. And so the prime is, so the Koch curve, you can take it all the way to infinity, repeating this pattern the whole time. If you didn't want to take it all the way to infinity, if it was a fractal that had a lower limiting scale. So once you start get to a certain point, it doesn't subdivide anymore. Um, so if this was our limiting scale right there, then this would be the prime. And so it's that lowest point of the fractal that's no longer divided. And so she verbal claims that because it's no longer divided, it has no temporal depth. Um, because temporal depth is created by dividing and condensing these moments into our memories. Um, and so she claims it's timeless, the prime is. And, and, she, and then she aligns the prime with uh, Roger Penrose's concept of insight. And so insight is, Penrose says, is how consciousness contacts Plato's ideas. The, the timeless, um, most abstract forms of, you know, chair, like the idea of the form of a chair that has no attributes. Um, and so in the same way, Brobel says by learning, we're getting closer to that prime, we're looking for that fundamental pattern that can be abstractly applied to many different situations 
Um, she's saying that's how we contact the timelessness um, that Penrose has is his essential ability of consciousness. He says that this ability to have insight, to contact timelessness, um, is something that cannot be done computationally. It cannot be done through an algorithm. Um, he uses Godel, Godel's theorem, which says that um, there, there's a difference between truth and demonstrability. There are truths that we know are true, but we, there, we have no way to prove them. We have no way to demonstrate them. And fascinatingly, both Penrose and Notal utilize Gödel's theorem and use it to say, and this is what quantum mechanics is showing us, that there are truths that we cannot predict, we cannot demonstrate, we cannot prove. Um, OK, so that's the prime. Learning, 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 condensing that fractal to try to get to the prime. And then insight is kind of coming back out, taking the timelessness of the prime back into the world and applying this, pat this fundamental pattern to all these other patterns that we experience. Uh, and that's what gives us our aha moments. It's, uh, I think of it as, you know, we are going through time down here, right? And it's this timeless axis of timelessness right here that allows us to take a perspective um, from up here and recognize patterns that take place in time. From within time, you can't see the pattern. From outside of time, you can see the pattern. And you can take that pattern once you have it up here and you can recognize it, how it applies to other patterns in time. Um, and so there's this the condensation and then the insight, reapplying it and relating those patterns to one another. Okay, so. Okay, and so another, another piece of this. So, so we've taken the fractal dimension and did this, and so it's the number of repetitions divided by the scaling factor. And so number of repetitions I associate with um, learning or remembering, kind of like Robel does with her levels of description. Um, but I say the number of times you do it, that's how you're improving your accuracy and improving your um, ability to reach that prime. The more you do it, the closer you're getting to the prime. Uh, and the scaling factor, I, have, I think, has, a, has to do with how much the memory is compressed. Um, so that if we have something that, that we're doing, that we're paying very close attention to, that our memory of that is going to be much closer to the actuality um, in resolution than, uh, than if we were not paying attention. Uh, and so it's, it's the compression of the information into our memory, depending upon how much attention we're paying um, as to how, how much we lose in that compression. So just like computers compress data, some algorithms compress it more accurately than others. Uh, we can, the way we compress data in our building of time and our transition in time, uh, there's more and less accurate ways to do that. And so that corresponds to the scaling factor. Uh, so fractals, when they condense information, they're not losing information. They, their resolution, you know, is continually increasing the more you zoom in. Um, but we are subject to error in our data compression, and so that's why we store multiple copies of things. And so that's why we have the number of repetitions. So not only is it repetitions in time, but it's also when you have an experience, you're going to store that experience in your brain in multiple places with tagged on to multiple different senses and all the different ways um, you experience that so that when you recall it, you have a number of different places to recall from and your error is going to decrease the more repetitions you have. So you're compressing the experience, but you're compressing it into multiple places to decrease your error. Uh, DNA does the same thing. It has uh, codons, so levels of, of three base pairs that code for amino acids, and there's a number of different codons that, pe that code for each amino acid. So there's lots of replication in the DNA of repetition of patterns to ensure there's less loss of accuracy um, in the replication of the DNA. Okay, 